What's up, traders? Matt from the Trade Brigade here doing a technical analysis on ticker symbol ESSC for E-Stone acquisition. On the left-hand side, we have the daily time frame, and on the right-hand side, the 30-minute intraday time frame. First things first, we haven't covered this one yet on the channel, so we're going to start, as always, with that daily roadmap. So coming in and pointing out the most obvious areas of support and resistance, what I just drew in there was the gap. Uh, we want to know about that. We want to know about this intermediate breakout point closer to 1250, and then the floor is certainly down here closer to 1060. I'm not saying that any of these downside levels will be in play. I'm just saying they're nice to know kind of where we're at in reference to them. So obviously the gap is something we should talk about. Obviously on this morning session, we opened higher than the Friday session and we pretty much ran the entire day, right? We closed close to the highs, not dead on them. So that of course is bullish. But if we do start breaking down underneath 1517, the obvious target would be here at 1417. And again, I'm not saying that it has to break down. I'm just saying that if 1517 is violated, that is the number to watch, 1417. Okay, these prior highs, and this one's also uh, certainly important. Just look at the amount of volume that transacted on that day. So putting a lot of emphasis on that 1417, if the move is lower, not only because it's the gap fill, but it's the it's the highest volume day that we have in this stock here or in this SPAC merger rather. So knowing that, let's go ahead and transition over to the 30 minute intraday time frame. The first thing I notice about this is actually what happened in the first 30 minute bar. Notice the upper wick on that, right? And what does this sort of imply, right? Sure, there was some euphoria. However, how did we close? kind of right back down after that initial uh, emotional drive higher wrapped up, right? So to me, it would sort of seem that anyone who was in here took profits or maybe some people took profits. Again, when I say that, I'm not saying that literally every single person took profits, but enough of them did to form this upper wick here. So to me, the types of players involved in this stock here are just looking for a quick buck. Now, in knowing that, you're not gonna be overly aggressive and hope that this thing gets up to like $50 and then holds and goes sideways. Now, could it do that? Yeah, anything can always happen in the stock market, but based on the activity and what it's sort of exhibiting here, it doesn't seem like a likely scenario. So in knowing that, if the breakout does happen tomorrow and you know we get continuation, just know that you're trading this thing, you're not investing in this thing. I always like to make that distinction. So uh, we take out our Fibonacci's, load of the move up to the high of the move. Ideally, we see further consolidation in here. And as of right now, we're currently holding on just by a hair. Uh, notice that in the post market, we're 1788 by 1796. So quite literally right on the lower uh, end of what's acceptable here above the 38.2. But if we can open up above, fine. From the daily perspective, essentially what we're doing doing here is putting in a consolidation bar. If that happens, the breakout is clearly up and over the highs to get into blue sky territories. And I would pay attention to 20, the nice round psychological number after that, maybe 25, but whole and half dollars, maybe even 10 cent marks as well as we're making our way to 25 if the breakout does happen in the first place. And again, if we get the consolidation that wants to respect our 38.2 up and above 1775. The other critical piece of this puzzle is of course going to be volume. If volume is not there tomorrow, if you see volume bars that start looking something like this and tapering off into nothing, this is not the stock to be long. Uh, essentially, this was just a quick one and done momentum type pop and people are losing interest, right? And without new interest, new eyeballs, new positions coming in, it's gonna be very, very hard, right? To make that upside momentum move up and through 20 into 25 potentially those whole dollars overhead as well so please keep an eye on volume as a minimum threshold what i would watch out for is kind of this area here which is really nothing on a sub 20 stock you know 200,000 shares per 30 minute bar it's not a whole lot. So that can easily happen on tomorrow's session. If it's there, look for the momentum play. If the volume is not there and people have lost interest, I would stay away from this stock if it breaks down underneath the 61.8, which we're gonna use as 1677. Uh, so any movement in here, step aside. You're obviously not gonna short this if we come on over to the trade tab. What you'll notice is that there's none to borrow and the volume here on the put side, it's actually not horrible. At the 10 strike, you can see that we get 1800 contracts, but I mean a zero by five cent bid ask spread, you're not actually going to play that, right? So there is no taking advantage of the downside here inside of Eastone. So those are my thoughts here on the company. If you enjoyed today's video or learned anything new, let me know in the comment section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our main channel is linked in the description. And all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.